Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator, and in this video, we're going to talk about something that's been making some headlines lately, and that a mysterious disease is killing off coral in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, that's from New Orleans um, Public Radio. This is from Florida Politics. A quick, deadly coral disease, the target of new NOAA plan, that's National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. And then um, scuba diving.com has been on it. And, and they said, you know, may, maybe it spreads through sand. Um, well, th they say it does say the study finds, but um, over here, they say it might be transported in ships' hulls. This is out of the University of Miami. And um, Environmental News Network reported that today, too. It, it may be transported in the ship's hulls. So um, the situation here pretty much is this is an October uh, 5th, 2022 article. So they say for eight, eight years, the uh, outbreak of disease began ravaging Florida's coral reefs. Uh, now scientists worry it has reached the Gulf of Mexico's uh, Sol Marine Sanctuary. And um, right here, this this will just show you how much it's off of Florida. Uh, so this is southern Florida, Mar Mar Martin County, Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade. You know, this is all very much south, all the way out past Key West, out to Dry Tortungus. It's a national park. It's an old military fort um, with a beach. Yeah, I've been out there. It's okay. But right here, the red is reported. The green is, is not reported. There's really nowhere in this area where it's not reported. So, um, yeah, this disease was first spotted in Florida's Virginia Key in 2014. It has since spread throughout the region and the broader Caribbean. And uh, this public radio article says since 2014, um, it's called the stony coral disease, has affected over 96,000 acres of reef in Florida, sickening the coral and killing them off within months after it eats away at their tissue. It also spread to the Caribbean and Mexico. In the past four years, the disease has killed about 46% of the reefs near Cozumel. And, and that's Mexico. That's a uh, an island off of um, Cancun, just a little south of Cancun. So the National Oce Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, the NOAA, uh, well, they released plans to help the vulnerable habitats. So the government to the rescue, uh, those plans include money, <laughs> of course, right? Uh, money for expanding the capacity for detecting and preventing the diseases spread. And right now, right, they, they don't, they have to work on the detecting part because they're, they're not really sure what's causing this. But um, about 625,000 over the next five years will go towards disease response in the marine sanctuary to support monitoring, intervention, and coral rescue. And uh, the NOAA research has noted there is still much they've yet to learn about the disease, including its cause and carrier. So it's pretty hard to prevent it if you don't know what's causing it. So, you know, that $625,000 does not really go very far in, in research. And they're, you know, since 2014, they're still a little baffled as to what's causing this. So um, Andy Bruckner, a research coordinator at NOAA's Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, um, said, you know, we're still in the dark ages about coral diseases. And um, he, he said that the stony coral disease has been the most destructive one to appear so far. It's unlikely the disease will ever be eradicated. Now that it's been introduced, but researchers hope to observe and learn from how the disease moves through the reefs to improve resilience. And uh, here's a 
a, a map, you know, this would be the Keys area here in, into the Gulf of Mexico and down into the Bahamas and, um, you know, Cozumel's about right here. <laughs> Look at all the red around um, uh, Mexican, the Yucatan Peninsula here, down into Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, out to Jamaica. Uh, yeah, they're feeling it. And uh, here's the legend. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. The, the legend goes over what you're trying to look at. So, but the red is present. Um, the yellow is maybe present. The green is absent. And the purple is new submission under review. So right here, there's a lot of red where it's definitely present. A few places where it's not present. The green, um, that's new. So, yeah, it's definitely spreading around the area. And this Florida Politics article says it's running rampant through 22 different coral species in Florida waters and throughout the Caribbean, affecting coral populations in the waters of at least 25 countries and territories. And they said that the stony coral tissue loss disease is highly infectious, often lethal disease that has devastated coral reefs throughout Florida and the wider Caribbean, re Caribbean in recent years. It, it says that uh, once corals are infected, they lose living tissue and usually die within weeks or months without active intervention. And yeah, they, they talk about intervention in some of these articles. We'll, we'll get to that. You know, they said um, this un this uh, outbreak is unique because there's high death rates and it progresses rapidly. Again, once infected, the coral colonies typically die within weeks, um, maybe two months. So they say, you know, it, it could be spread by ship's ballast water, um, you know, but scientists aren't certain about what the disease is. Um, viral, bacterial, or a mix, and uh, they said that they feel it could, we feel that it could be multiple factors, so it could be some of these biotic agents like bacteria and viruses, uh, Andy Buckner, the research coordinator of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary said, um, and, and then of course they talk about environmental stresses, and, um, you know, that includes um, both point and non-point source pollution, source pollution, uh, sediment, nutrient load, sewage, unsustainable fishing, and, of course, <laughs> the effects of climate change, which could, you know, include warming and acidifying oceans. So they said right now, uh, the plan is meant to facilitate clearing up of some of these areas of uncertainty. Uh, like like how how this is created, you know, <laughs> uh, which should lead to more effective means of treating and stopping the spread of the disease. But uh, that Andy Buckner from above said one of the challenges is I don't think that it's feasible to completely eradicate this disease. It's always going to be around. Uh, basically, now that it's been here, it's it's just going to be around. So this um, scuba diving.com says that a, a study found it spreads through the sand. And this ENN article here says that it could be transported um, in the ship's hull. So they um, talked about this University of Miami um, study, which, which this article from the University of Miami is really about. But um, they say here that the research suggests that transport through ship's hulls where the vessel take on ballast water in one region to keep it stable and release it at a different port may have contributed to the disease spread. But, right, you know, even Noah says that they don't really know where it comes from, so they got to try to figure that out first. But uh, here's the University of Miami who put out some information about that study. Uh, they say that the stony coral tissue loss disease was first absorbed, observed near Miami in 2014 and has since spread throughout all of Florida's coral reef 
and into the Caribbean, including waters off Jamaica, St. Martin, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Belize. Um, and the study says that outbreaks in very distant locations suggest that the disease transport was aided by means other than just ocean currents, such as through ship ballast water, uh, said the study's leading author, Michael S-T-U-D-I-V-A-N, Studevan, um, an assistant scientist at the University of Miami Cooperative Institute for Marine and Atmospheric Studies, and NOAA's um, Atlantic Oce Oceanographic and Meteorologic Meteorological Laboratory. So right here, one of those uh, interventions is, you know, they simulated the ship's ballast water and UV treatment of ballast water. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they, they were kind of playing around with um, some UV treatment. And um, in this Florida Politics article, it says, uh, since corals respond well to antibiotic treatments. <laughs> yeah, they said um, bacteria seems to be a part of it. Because, yeah, I guess they're doing antibiotic treatments on the coral, too. So, right, talk about just, you know, introducing more foreign substances. So, right now, there's not really a lot of answers. You know, even um, the scientists in NOAA are puzzled as to how this is happening and how this is spreading. But right now, there is a mysterious disease killing off coral in the Gulf of Mexico, and that is spreading around. And we all, we all know how that goes, you know. It's not just the coral. It, it, so many industries are dependent upon this, you know, tourism and um, fishing. <laughs> you know, there, there's just so many things that are dependent upon us to have healthy oceans and part of healthy oceans is healthy coral reefs. And right now, um, I'm, I'm assuming this is, you know, the part where the, the tissue has been taken away here and, and that has the coral die. So right now there's just um, a mysterious disease and it's affecting the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and it will be affecting a lot of things pretty soon if we don't get a control on it. Um, you know, kind of like what happened down there in the Great Barrier Reef. So just a little bit of tidbit of information about what's happening around the planet. And stay tuned for Friday Funny tomorrow, people.